Father, we come in the name of Jesus to give all the glory, honor, and praise to you, God the Father, to you, God the Son, and to you, God the Holy Spirit. With your love, you have saved us. With your power, you have raised us. With your blood, you have bathed us. With your mercy, you forgave us. And with your grace, we're so grateful for the new life. More abundantly guide us this in every moment of our life, Father, to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, to follow you more nearly, to trust you more surely, and to worship you more purely. Father, give us a heart to give to you more cheerfully, to obey you more willfully, to serve you more skillfully, to pray to you more cheerfully, and respect your word more fearfully. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Give God a praise offering as we begin today. The psalmist says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is still a mystery. Today is the gift. That's why we call it what? The present. And God wants you to make up your mind to live in the present moment with him one day at a time. I go to you as we go to our scriptures today. We first of all start with Psalm 16 and 11. You, Lord, will show me the path of life. In your presence is what? Fullness of joy at your right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. Psalms 27 and 4, I give you this one. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Amen. Praise God. Somebody say, God's presence, God's presence is our greatest present. I have just a minute with 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, I can't refuse it. I didn't seek it. I didn't choose it. But it's up to me to use it. I will suffer if I abuse it, give account to God if I misuse it. Just a tiny little minute. But eternity is in it. And God wants to get into your spirit, praise God. Learn how to live each day in earth-tight compartments. The psalmist begin saying, this is the day the Lord has made. He says, let us do what? Rejoice and be glad in it. It's another day not promised. Give God praise another day not clothed in your right Clothing your right mind. Another day with a fair portion of health and strength. Another day with food to eat uh, 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 from trees and vineyards that we didn't plant. Another day with water that, from wells that we did not dig. It's another day that the Lord has made. And he wants you and I to live every day for all that is worth. Quit worrying about tomorrow. Tomorrow ain't promised, y'all. All you got is today. When you wake up tomorrow, what do you think tomorrow is going to be? It's going to be today. Yeah. Quit worrying about yesterday. The old Beatles song says, when all my troubles seem so far away. And I would say to the Beatles, I don't believe in yesterday. I believe in today. I believe in right here right now and I'm so thankful I've learned how to live positively one day at a time. Take no thought for tomorrow is what Jesus said. Tomorrow we got enough problems of its own. Do what you can today and know that the Lord's got you. That whatever comes by the will of God is going to be met by the grace of God. And he sees too many of his children, y'all, worrying about everything and praying about nothing. Jesus says, don't you know you're worth more than sparrows? Somebody say, chee-chee birds. Chee -chee -birds. 
They don't even know where the next meal is coming from, but they know they got to follow. They know they need to eat. And the word says, unless we become like little children, we won't inherit the kingdom of heaven. And we see these beautiful children in here today. They don't look like they're worried about nothing in their life. They know they got a mama. They know they got uh, parents that know they need to eat, that know they need to sleep, that know what they need even before they ask. And Jesus is saying, can't you become like a child and trust me even when you can't trace me and have faith in me even when you can't find me? To have hope in me that's beyond your scope to know that I'm at my very best when you can't see the way. That's when I'm making a way out of no way. And every time I go and read that old fable about footprints of man walking on the beach and uh, uh, he noticed that during the darkest times he only saw one set of footprints and he couldn't wait to ask the Lord you said you'd never leave me nor forsake me and during the dark times I only saw one set of footprints and the Lord said my child when you saw one set of footprints that's when I was carrying you Somebody say, where God guides, God provides. And he wants us to, to, to live one day at a time, to live in the present moment, y'all. The future is not even promised, but you do have today. And God wants you to make the most out of each day, to do what you can today to be like the psalmist, not only to say when you wake up, one of my favorite thoughts when I wake up every morning is this is the day the Lord has made. I can't speak for other people, but I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be joyful over and over and over again and be glad in it and live this day. Somebody say to win it. To win. You got to get in it. And you, God sees people, praise God, they went to bed last night, they had a goal to get up this morning. And you need to realize, y'all, there's some people that have already got up and gone. Some people that are making funeral arrangements right now, if they did know Christ, others are making homegoing celebrations if they did know Christ. And God says, don't count time, baby, make your time count for the Lord. Be excited to have another day not promised. I don't know about you, but after I, I thank him uh, for, for another day not promised, anybody glad to be clothed in your right mind? Give him yeah. praise for, for a portion of mental health. I got enough sense to know man without God is nothing. God without man is still God. And I got a heavenly father. The Greek word for father is patter again. Not only did he procreate me in his own image, he made me a little lower than the angels. And the beautiful thing about being made in God's own image, if you don't like your circumstances, sometimes say you can change them. You can start working the word, praise God, and change your circumstances. Because he's given us all these promises that are yes and amen, because God's not a man that can lie. Or a son of man who changes his mind. Not only did, is he our pattern who procreated us, the Bible says he is our protector, our provider, and our priest. And for those who went to college and didn't get it, David had to do it like this. When he gave us the 23rd Psalm, he reminded us, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What do you mean, David? I shall not want rest because he made me lie down in green pastures. And if Daniel got rest in a lion's den, I'm sure going to get rest in my king-sized bed. <laughs> rest is one of the greatest blessings that we have in Christ. Come unto me, all ye who are laboring and are heavy laden. And what is the promise from God? I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. So he says, he's my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want drink because he lead me besides the still waters. 
I shall not want forgiveness. The Bible says he restores my soul. Anybody glad that God has forgiven every sin in your life? Though your sins were as scarlet, he's washed them white as snow. And God wants you to know today that no matter where you in life, God is not mad at you. He's mad about you. Amen. Because he's got a plan for your life. The only person that God is mad about is this thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy your life. He's mad because before we grow up, we'd be taking his short-term gain and not understanding the long-term pain. When God has a plan for our life to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask according to the power that works within us. And God wants you to know today no matter where you start, if you had not enough, just enough, or had more than enough, if you got the faith, God has the power. And he wants to do great things in our life. It's called the hope of his glory. And one of the things that we got to do is to make up our mind to go all the way. How can you tell, y'all, if you're walking in God's presence? One of the things that I know about God's presence, not only is he our protector, our provider, and our priest because he's our procreator, but one of the signs of walking in God's presence in the path of God Somebody say perfect peace. Perfect peace. When you're walking with God, you know that he has given you a perfect peace that surpass all understanding when you keep your mind stayed on him. He has taught us to pray about everything and what? Worry about nothing. Another way that you know you're in God's presence, praise God, that you become a true worshiper. And not a part-time praiser. Part-time praisers can praise him when their pockets got the mumps. Or boo and me is getting along. Or the kids are on the A honor roll. But the psalmist says in 34.1, I will bless the Lord when at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And when you grow up and learn how to put a praise on things, praise God, you know that you're in God's presence. That's right. That's right. You know that you're in his presence when you acknowledge him in all your ways, y'all. One of the things that we have to do is stop doing things and asking God to bless what we're doing and make up our mind to bless what God is doing. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But right now, God is saying the key part for you is that in all your ways, do what? Acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. And when we go to him before we make decisions and acknowledge him, this is what you want me to do, praise God. Somebody say what he guides, he provides. And y'all, when you under the shadow of the Most High, praise God, you ain't got to worry about nothing in this world because it's his responsibility to take care of you. And his word reminds you that my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not obey. And God wants to know where you are today, praise God. You know, if, if we had 100 children in here today and we had 100 parents in here today and all of a sudden we told the children and we're getting ready to cut these lights off and all you can say is mama or daddy, mama or daddy. And all your mom and daddy can say is son, daughter, or son, daughter. How many of us know if you're doing it right most of the children should be able to find their parents because they know their voice. And God says, do you know my voice? Don't you know what I God I provide? And if we just make up our mind to let God guide, he has promised y'all to not only uh, provide, but to supply all our needs according to 
his riches in glory. And I've been with him for a minute, y'all. And one thing I can say about the Lord, he never wrote a bad check. His will is his bill. And if God says he's going to do something, praise God, he reminds us he will do what he said he will do. He's not a man that can lie. He will come through. When you're in his presence, somebody say, you enjoy the Lord. Y'all, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And when you have his joy, I like to call it, somebody say Jesus joy. Jesus joy. I am so thankful to have a happy thought in my life. I heard a song once that said, when I just speak about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, it makes me want to dance, 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 dance all night. I'm so glad. I got a thought in my mind that no matter what I'm going through, if I was semi-sad, that's the most sad I can get is semi-sad. But when I wake up and remind myself who I am and whose I am, all I got to do is think about the goodness of Jesus. And I can go from semi-sad to joyfully glad. And he has taught us, y'all, how to think on these things. Somebody say what you think about. What you, you bring about. You bring about. And the Apostle Paul, y'all, we know five times he received 39 lashes. Once he was stoned and left for dead. Once he was bitten by a snake. The same Apostle Paul who wrote 28.2% of the New Testament that God changed from Saul to Paul to let you know it's no secret what God can do, what he did for Saul, he can do for you. Yeah. Yeah. He taught us, y'all. That when you're going through things, what we think about, we bring about. And in Philippians 4, Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. For me to repeat this ain't hard because I know some of you don't understand that when you're going through stuff, the importance of putting a praise on it. We got a lot of folks that want to focus on what they're going through instead of what the word says. And the Bible reminds you God is a spirit. And if you're going to truly worship him as a true worshiper, you worship him how? In spirit and in truth. The victory is already yours in the spirit. The truth is God's word who can't lie, who can't fail, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, but he can't be pleased without faith. And God says, when are you going to speak the word and not your circumstances? Amen. Do I have anybody that call things that are not as though they are? Amen. That are not moved by what I see, but I'm moved by what the word says. Yes. Jesus taught us that. When he was tempted in the wilderness, 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry and this thief came. If you're really who you say you are, turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, it is written. He spoke the word. Man don't live by bread alone. Well, if you're really who you say you are, dive off this pinnacle. It is written. We don't tempt God. And finally, he just told the devil, get behind me, Satan. You don't have nothing to offer me that my father hadn't already provided for me. And the word says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony. Do I have anybody that's got a testimony with the Lord? Has he brought you through anything in life? We should know it's no secret what God can do. We should know if he did it before, he can do it again. And when you have his presence, you've got a joy that the world didn't give to you. And the world can't take it out. What's another quality of living in God's presence? Somebody say safety. Safety. Ooh, praise God. Y'all, it is such a joy to have a heavenly father that knows how to protect you like nobody else can protect you. The psalmist said in 121, what I love about the Lord, it says, he that keepeth me neither slumbers nor sleep. 
Now, you may have your boo trying to protect you, and there may be some robbers around, and boo may say, well, the way I hear what the pastor say, but I'm going to go get my Roscoe, and I'm going to sit on this front porch, and I'm going to protect you. But how many of you know if you sit on that front porch long enough, you're going to get sleepy? But we got somebody protecting us who never slumbers, who never sleeps all night, all day. Angels watching over me, my Lord. And he sends his angels to protect us. Y'all, the Bible says angels hearken to the word of God. Do I have anybody that's speaking the word? Yes. Angels excel in strength. They see us getting weak. Like when Jesus was in the wilderness and they come to our aid to help make us strong. Those are the benefits when you are living in God's presence. Somebody say empowerment. Empowerment. Y'all, the anointing gives you the power of God in your life that when you're facing challenges in your life, God gives you the power. When you got the faith, he becomes that power. Yes. Now, you got to understand his ways because there are certain times, y'all, when we can ask God to do things for us, but he wants us to grow up to do it for ourselves. Yes. Yes. Now, again, I love this illustration. We've got a young man here that's about six or seven years age. Uh, uh, praise God. And if he had a a, 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 a 16-year-old teenager taking his lunch money, Tanya be the first one running up to the school. Yes, Y'all ain't going to be taking my, my grandbaby's <laughs> lunch money. But let's reverse the question, y'all. If he was 16 and a 7-year-old was taking his lunch money, what, what, what time you going to say? You better get up there and get your lunch money. And don't you come home without it. And that's the way God is sometimes when we had these little old bitty demons that we were, oh, God, take him out of my life. Oh, God, take her out of my life. And then all of a sudden you listen to the radio and a song comes on, must be 50 ways to leave your lover. Just slip out the back, Jack. Make a new plan, Stan. You don't need to decor, Roy. Just listen to me. Hop on the bus, Gus. You don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the key, Lee, and set your self free. I don't need nobody to do that. You got caller ID. You got block on your phone. I done showed you how to do it. And don't be waiting on me to do it. Because it takes faith that works. Another one is contentment, y'all. It's something that don't come natural to us in the world. But the Apostle Paul reminded us that we have to learn to be content. Somebody say, to have a satisfied mind. To have a satisfied mind. And you read earlier in the handout, y'all, the richest person ain't the person that has the most, but it's the one who needs the least to be happy. Do I have any contented people in here today? As long as I got Team Jesus, as long as I got Team Jesus, I got everything I need. And when you learn how to be content, it gives you the capacity to wait on the Lord. To know that he may not come when you want him, but have I got a witness? He's an on time God. And lastly, eternal life. How do you know you're in presence, God's presence? Jesus taught us in John 17 and 3, he says, this is eternal life. To get to know the Father and to get to know the Son whom he's sent. And when you get hungry like a deer panting for water, when you get thirsty like a deer panting for water and you just want more of God and less of me, when you want to decrease self and increase God, Somebody say, God's presence, God's presence become your greatest present. If you can receive it, give him praise today. Father, we love you. 
and our heart's desire is to please you, yes. to place no other person, place, or thing before you, yes. to love you, Father, with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength, Father, to acknowledge you in all of our ways before we try to do anything, Father. We just want your will to be clear, yes. to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And you've promised that all these other things will be added unto you. To serve you, Father, with gladness and never madness and sadness, but to know the privilege of having another day not promised. To know that only what we do for Christ will last. To know, Father, that you brought us here for a reason and a season that we may work your works of you who sent us while it is day. But we know, Father, soon we're not leaving home. We're going home. And, Father, we expect you to do what you said you would do. And, Father, as we thank you for your presence, we thank you for the joy that we have in your presence. We simply say, have your way. Father, you be the potter. We'll be grateful to be your clay. Mold us. Shape us, yes. do as you please. We stand with our Lord saying, thy will be done. Give the Lord a praise offering. He loves us, y'all. And he wants us to leave with one thought today. His presence is our greatest present.